if I ask myself, what do I want? What do I need? If I put myself first in this moment, does that make me selfish? Yeah. Um, do you think that's true? How do you address that? Yeah, that I, I hit that right in the first chapter because I felt that way because I had my own sort of breakdown mm. from only focusing on other people. And then I had this moment. I was like, what do I want? And it was just something really simple that meant a lot to me. It didn't hurt anybody yeah. else, you know, and it usually doesn't. So how I delineate that is there's selfhood and then yes. there's selfishness on one hand and selflessness on the other. And selfishness says, it's all about me. It's my way or the highway. My needs come first, no matter what. I don't think about other people. You know that we don't want that. Nobody wants that. That's not healthy for anybody. Selflessness says it's never about me. My needs don't matter. I'll put you first, even if it's terrible for me. That's not healthy either. That is not yeah. healthy. The middle ground, what I call selfhood, which is a psychology term, but this idea of becoming a self is, is this both and. It's my needs matter and your needs matter. And guess what? If we're going to be in a relationship together to, as two selves, we're going to have to figure that out. We're going to have to negotiate. We're going to have to figure out how to negotiate through. I mean, when we love each other, it's, it's not always easy. This is why relationships are hard. And we yeah. create something so much more beautiful when it's two whole selves coming together saying, this is what I want and need. This is what I want and need. All right, let's get to work. How are we going to negotiate that? And we do have to sometimes be patient. Sometimes what I need and what I want doesn't match up with the needs of my kids or the needs of my spouse. And sometimes theirs don't. But I have at least acknowledged this is a need and a want that I have. And maybe I am going to set it aside for a season, but I've made a promise to myself that I will come back to it. You know, there's still that honoring of it. Mm. So I'm not saying we always go right after it, but we do know, we honor it, we find ways. It's not that it's always about me. It's that I'm going to put on my yes. own oxygen mask before I meet yes. your need. I am going to do some things for myself in this relationship. And guess what? I'm going to be a better parent and a better wife and a better friend when I do that because I'm not going to become so resentful, right? I'm going to have a whole person. You're going to have a whole person to relate to here. So much healthier Come for our on. relationships. Come on. Yes. <laughs> amen. Big fat right. amen to that. Yeah. Like we know that we as women have been conditioned to kind of seek external permission, yeah. if you like, whereas men don't. Can you speak into how that plays into us as women setting boundaries, healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. and how we go about it? Yeah. Well, one of the things I found in my practice, and I go through this in the book, is a lot of women have an idea, I need to set boundaries, I want to set boundaries. And, and in fact, there's a lot of mm -hmm. shame, but it's really hard to do. Why am I not, right? We almost shame ourselves. <laughs> for the fact that we're not setting boundaries. And I kept seeing this over and over. And so that's why I began to say, in the book, I don't get into boundaries until chapter six, because I realized there's all this pre-work a lot of us have to do, which is to develop that strong sense of inner knowing, inner conviction, that this is what I want. And because I want and need this, I have to say no to this, right? So with boundaries, we okay. so often go to, I just want to get all this stuff out of my life, right? Because I'm overwhelmed, I'm exhausted, and I'm resentful. So just get out of my hair. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that from time to time. But true boundaries flow for, you know, and I think this is so true for women. We first have to get at, what do I actually want? Do I want this person out of my life? Do I want this thing to change? Do I, is there something I'm doing? We, we train people sort of how to treat us in many cases. We yes. train people, right? To expect us mm -hmm. to always be the one to respond, always be the, one, be the one. So sometimes boundaries are, I have to stop. I have to inhibit my own tendency to what psychologists call fun or people please or, or show yes. up even when I don't have the capacity to show up. It might be less about going to that other person and saying, hey, stop asking me. And it might be more about starting with, I'm going to have to just say no thanks or not respond. or So, right, there's a lot that we yeah. have to get clear on inside of ourselves before then we get to the external work, which is important of communicating on behalf of the clarity we've discovered inside about where we need to go, which is why I've got to say 
put some guardrails up with these relationships or with these commitments.